Hi everyone, welcome to our FCBC services for this weekend, to all the FCBC family. Great to have you connected with us and if you're uh, not from FCBC but you're joining us for the first time or you're connected from overseas, thank you so much for taking this time out with us. We just trust you're going to have a great time with us as well. You know, we always start our services with a time of worship. But before we prepare our hearts, before we pray and we come and we worship the Lord, you know, the Lord just places upon my heart, which uh, later on I'm going to be preaching a little bit more about this. But in John chapter 3, there was a segment where it records uh, the words of John the Baptist. And there's one part right there, I believe it's verse 30, where John the Baptist actually said this about Jesus, saying that he must, de- he must increase and I must decrease, you know. And today as we come and start this service before we hear the Word of God, before we worship and everything, I I just felt like we need to have this same mindset, that as we come for this service, we must say, Lord, may you increase and may we decrease. Now, what what does that mean? I think it can mean many different things, it can look like many different things for us, but for, let's just think about this right now. Maybe for us in this moment, how we can decrease is that we must put aside our distractions. We must put aside our different thoughts, the different things that we are focusing on and choose to focus on God only. That during this time of worship, say, Lord, I, I know there may be a thousand and one things on my mind. I'm thinking about a lot of different things. But Lord, may all these things decrease. And as we worship you, may you increase. May, may, may your presence increase. May my awareness of your presence that's with me increase so that you are my focus. So today, let's do that. We're going we're gonna to pray. Why don't we just all stand, if it's possible for you. Why don't you stand wherever you are. Turn to someone around you and say, let's focus on the Lord. And then with that, let's just close our eyes, bow our heads, let's join our hearts together, let's pray and commit this time to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, this privilege we have to come and worship you. Lord, truly, our hearts desire is that may you increase and may we decrease all our own fears, all our own considerations, all our own worries, anxieties, our thoughts, our feelings, whatever it is that does not please you, whatever it is that is of the flesh of our own human nature, Lord, may it decrease and may your presence increase, may your glory increase in our lives. May our awareness of just how majestic and how awesome you are increase as well. So Lord, we commit this time to your hands that as we worship you, Lord, we want to encounter you. We want to see more of you in our midst, Lord. So we thank you. We commit this time into your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let's put on a big smile and let's worship the Lord. Pastor Roger, lead us. Thank you, Pastor Roger. Well, thank God that in Him, we can find our purpose and destiny. Hallelujah. In vain all my weakness, You wrap me up in grace. And the worst of me succeeded by the best of you. Hey! Whoa, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh. And my heart is overtaken. My soul is overwhelmed. The worst of me succeeded by the best of you. My dreams have found their purpose, my future in your hands. This life would have no meaning if it weren't for you. Yeah. So I lay me down for kingdom come, still all that. Within me, cause all I want of this world is more of you. In the less of me, it is you increasing as I fade away. Your life for all the world to see. Yeah, God, it is you who breaks the chains, it is you who likes to wait in everything I am. Cries out for you. Lord, make my life transparent. Your life and mine display. Let every earthly glory go back to you. Yep. So I lay me down for kingdom come. Still all that is within me. Cause all I 
one of this world is more of you in the less of me it is you increasing as i fade away your light for all the world to see oh yeah god it is you who breaks the chains it is you who lights the way and everything i am cries out for you This world is more of you In the less of me it is you Increasing as I fade away Your light for all the world to see God, it is you Who breaks the chains It is you Who lights the way And everything I am Cries out for you Sing Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, today as I was just thinking, I've been a Christian for 40 years. This year, I've been a Christian for 40 years. And now I just realized that the Christian walk is never a smooth one. Uh, so there was this period I, and I really sidetracked and I went off course. Um, uh, during the first few years as a believer it wasn't easy but one thing that I'm thankful for is the faithfulness of God you know, because once you have tasted of the goodness of God God is always there to remind to remind you to remind me and so I thank God that you know He, he put me back into the fold again I'm so grateful to Him and I know that some of us some of you maybe experiencing the same thing you find that you have sidetracked you're going off course but you know what the Lord is saying to you right now come home come back I'm here for you so let's come to the cross let's come to the altar Father we come right now Lord. thank you Jesus Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Leave behind your regrets States, come today. There's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and treat them for joy. 
from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ What a Savior, isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. And bow down before Him, for He is Lord of Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing Hallelujah, Christ is risen. down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. No, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let's just come to the cross right now. We come to the altar. And just come and do that beautiful exchange. Let the Lord commune with us. Speak to the Lord in Holy Spirit. Speak to your people. Thank you, Lord. And sometimes, Lord, in our daily battles, we may lose, but we know at the end of the day, Father, we're going to emerge victorious because you are our victorious champion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In all victory you have won In victory, yes, you have come And what was stolen, you brought back to us In all victory you have won Victorious, you have come. What was stolen, you brought back to us. Yes, our champion, you fight for us. You made a way where there was none. Our champion. 
your strong enough the debt we owe you paid in blood the one in whom we belong we'll lift our voice join his song we were often now forever yours forever yours our champion you fight for us you made a way where there was none our champion you're strong in us the debt we owed you paid in blood yes thank you lord and we will shout it out from the mountain tops that our god is good has overcome let all the earth every tribe in time we will see it out. he has overcome we will shout it out from the mountain tops that our god is good he has overcome let all the earth every tribe and tongue we will sing it out he has overcome our champion you fight for us you made a way where there was none our champion you're strong enough the death we owe you paid in blood our champion you fight for us you made a way where there was none our champion you're strong in us the death we owe you paid in Thank you, Jesus. We are victorious champion in you, Lord. And because of that, Lord Jesus, we can continue and declare our hallelujahs to you, Lord. Even as we move forth, Lord, even into the unknown. Things may be uncertain, but we know, God, our victory is found in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me And I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm And louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar And up from the ashes Hope will arise And death is defeated The King is alive out of me I raise a hallelujah and I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Lost your hold on me, and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, and louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, and death is defeated. The King is alive. So sing louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Hey, sing louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing louder. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm and Louder and louder, you gotta hear my praises roar Up from the ashes, hope will arise And death is defeated, the King is alive And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm and louder and louder, you gotta hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, and death is defeated. The King is alive. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, whatever, it, whatever the situation is, whatever it is that we may face at any given time in our lives, Lord, may we always choose to raise a hallelujah. May we always choose to raise your name on high. May we always choose to praise you and to exalt you above every single situation that we may face. Because Lord, truly in our lives, you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords. And we don't just want these things that we say, these words that we sing to just be something we say just for the sake of it but Lord because we we truly believe in it because we truly want to believe in it we want to declare by faith this over whatever it is that we're going through in our lives so Lord we pray for every single person watching this service Lord may you give us your strength and your courage and Lord when we face the storms when we face the difficult situations that we will be a people who will be found to be praising you. We'll be found to be people who would sing in the middle of the storm. Not because we don't believe that the storm is not serious, not because this, the storm is nothing, but Lord, because we know that you are greater no matter what it is. And so Lord, may we always be a faithful people like that. May we always be a people of faith who will declare your praises always. Thank you, Lord. Well, church, we're going to, you know, since we're, we're just tonight, this time, we've just been proclaiming the Lord's victory, remembering the victory that He's won for us. And I think this is a great time for us to enter into prayer. You know, every time we pray at our services, it's not just part of the program. It is spiritual warfare. We're interceding for our lives, our church, the people of our nation, and every other nation that's rep represented here as well. So we're going to come and we must pray. And as always, I mean, for all those people back at home and, and if you're, come, you're joining us from a different country, a different nation, during this time, do take this time to pray for your own nation as well. But for the rest of us here in Singapore, I, I, I've said this quite a few times, but I just felt led to, to, to us to be praying in this area again. You know, just I think in the past week, things have been kind of moving back to a more normal state. You can kind of go out and dine in, in selected small groups now and so on. And 
you know, a lot of us, we're kind of, we're kind of just trying to see, oh, you know, what can I do? What can I not do? How do I go back to living out my quote-unquote normal life? For us here in church, we're sort of thinking, you know, how do we, you know, have our services and everything. We're trying to get back into what we kind of want to do. But I think we must never forget that during this time, there are also people who, I mean, they are, they are confirmed with COVID and they are going through treatment just now. I was looking at it. I think we have about 100, uh, over people, 139 people who are hospitalized, if I'm not mistaken. And out of that, there are four people who are in critical condition. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't move on with our own lives, but I think we should remember those who are, who are unwell during this time, who are, I mean, really, we're all fighting this pandemic but for them they're really fighting it and uh, fighting for their lives as well in these critical conditions i think we must pray for them and we must never forget them yes every time we pray we pray for breakthrough we pray that god this whole thing will will go by and and, and so on but we must not forget those who are who are unwell in the hospitals receiving treatment those who are in critical condition we must come and pray for them so today again that that I, I just felt very strongly in my heart that we want to come and pray. Yes, we'll pray for all the different things. As always, we pray for, for wisdom upon the entire nation, leaders, uh, whether it's in the government or different uh, organizations, companies, churches, other religious organizations. We need the Lord's wisdom so that the Lord will guide us as to what we need to do. We must pray for protection and safety of all the people, especially as we move towards uh, the resumption of school again. Uh, we, we must pray for all our frontline workers as well. So let's do, do pray for that. But like I said, let's specifically pray for those who are in hospital, who have been positive for COVID, they're receiving treatment, especially those four who are in critical condition. All right, so let's pray. I'm going to come to three at a count of three. We'll declare hallelujah three times. You can pray in English, pray in tongues. Uh, if you're, from, you're tuning in from a different country, pray for your own nation. You know the situation there. You know the needs there. Uh, but yeah, let's come and really intercede over the next couple of minutes, all right? So I'm going to count right now and let's pray. Ready? One, two, and three. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. Let's pray right now. Oh yes, Lord, just as we sang just now, that we, we raise a hallelujah, Lord, we raise our voices during this time. Right now, we want to pray and intercede despite this storm, despite this situation. Lord, we know, we, we don't know what uh, the, the season ahead has in store for us, but what we do know is that you are God who hears our cries. Lord, you are God who's sovereign, you are God who cares for us, you are God who goes before us. So Lord, we commit all the different prayer items to your hands. Lord, we commit Singapore into your hands. Lord, you watch over us, lead us and guide us as we come out of different measures, different way of adjusting to life in this season, different uh, us, precautionary measures that must be implemented. Lord, guide us, give us your wisdom. We ask for your protection upon us as a nation in our coming and our going as we move towards uh, schools being uh, started again. Lord, we just cry out for your protection upon the students, upon the children, upon the, the, the youth of this nation, Lord. So we just come and we commit all these different uh, aspects to your hands. And Lord, right now we want to pray for those who have tested positive for COVID and they're undergoing treatment in the hospitals, Lord, with those hundred over people, Lord. We pray that you will be with them, let your peace come upon them, oh Lord. And we know that it's not just them, but their family members must be worried as well. May your peace just come and, and be upon each and every one of them. We ask your healing to be upon them. We know that you are Jehovah Rapha. We speak your healing. We commit them into your hands. Lord, we pray for those uh, four people who are in critical condition as well. Lord, we may not know what is uh, the situation exactly, but Lord, we know that you love them. Lord, we cry out that through this, they will have that, 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 that your reality will come through for them. And Lord, they will know you are there. They will come to the reality of who you are, Lord. So we ask for breakthroughs. We ask that you move in such a supernatural and such a powerful way. Lord, I wish you could have said I wish Oh, hallelujah. Lord, there's so many things in life that we don't know, so many things we cannot even begin to understand. But we're thankful that we can know you. We're thankful we can know that you are a good God, you are a great God, you are the sovereign Lord. And though the, 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 the situation ahead of us may look 
unsettling, it may look murky or whatever it is, but Lord, we know that your word tells us that you go before us, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we thank you. We thank you for hearing our prayers and we commit all these different items into your hands. We pray for Singapore and every other nation that's represented at this service. Lord, watch over us, guide us, let your wisdom be upon us, protect us in our coming and our going, Lord. And we pray for all the people who have tested positive and, and they are receiving treatment in the hospitals, especially those in critical conditions. We ask your presence to be upon them. May your healing be upon them. And may your peace just come, not just upon them, but upon all uh, their family members, their friends who must be worried about them as well. We ask that you bless the healthcare workers who are looking out for them uh, in whatever capacity. Lord, may you anoint their hands, anoint their entire beings as they serve these people, as they tend to them. Lord, truly may they be used as your healing hands. So we commit them into your hands. We commit every single thing that we've prayed into your hands. And Lord, we ask that you watch over us. And and Lord, may we always be a prayerful people that in any situation we face, Lord, we will always turn to you in prayer. We will always come before you knowing that you are here with us and that you hear our cries. So Lord, we thank you. We pray all this in your precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I think it's always so good to pray together. Well, you can be seated right now if you're not seated yet. And during your own time, of course, let's do continue to be in prayer through the entire uh, COVID situation. We must always uh, lift up this into the Lord's hands and just ask the Lord for the breakthrough that, that we need. And right now, as you take your seats, we're going to continue worshipping the Lord through the giving of our tithes and our offering and no change to the home way that we're giving it. It's all currently uh, online and on a digital platform. So we're going to put up the two QR codes on the screen right now. And uh, it's always interesting to take note that these two QR codes must be scanned with your respective banking apps in order for them to work. And uh, if for some reason it's not quite working out, you can always head to the URL over there, fcbc.org.sg slash offering. Just take note that there are two QR codes there. The one in the red border is for our regular tithes and offerings. This goes into our general fund uh, so that we can run the church and the various ministries of the church. Uh, while the one in the blue border is for our missions and faith pledges, which is over and above our regular giving. And uh, what happens with this uh, collection here is that it goes into ministries and initiatives, uh, both local and overseas, but they're outside of FCBC and uh, they all exist for the purpose of the uh, preaching of the gospel in various forms. So uh, if the Lord is prompting you to give to that area, please do give to our missions and faith pledges as well. So as you prepare everything that you need to do to give your offering, why don't we come and join our hearts together and commit this offering to the Lord's hands. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to give to you. We thank you that you have showed us what it means to give and you have given us the greatest gift ever. So we pray that as we learn from you, as we give to you, may this offering bring you delight, may it honour you, and may you use it for the furtherance of your kingdom here in Singapore and around the world. So we give to you joyfully, we give to you confidently, we give to you knowing that you are Jehovah Jireh, the one who will always provide for us in every season, in every situation. So we commit this offering to your hands, we bless you with it, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Amen. So may the Lord bless you abundantly as you give to Him. A couple of announcements that we have for this weekend. Uh, I think we've got about three of them in total, right? So uh, first up, again, uh, is on our 40 days of prayer and fasting this season that Love Singapore goes through. And of course, FCBC being a part of Love Singapore, we're going to be participating in this as well. And the 40 days of prayer and fasting season will begin uh, from the 1st of July and it will last all the way to 9th of August, National Day itself. And the theme for this year is called From the Ground Up. It's based on the book of Nehemiah. And like I mentioned last uh, uh, weekend, this guide, this prayer guide and all the teachings there, it will not be made available through a hard copy, but everything is going to be digital, it will be online, so it will be published online and starting from uh, this coming Thursday, the 1st of July, the prayer entries will be made available one day at a time on the 40 Day 2021 website, which I believe is on the screen there, lovesingapore.org.sg slash 40 Day slash 2021. So just do take note of that. 
So that's the first announcement. Second one is uh, our Holy Communion. Holy Communion weekend will be on the 3rd and 4th of July, which is next weekend, all right? So make sure that you, uh, for those of us joining us online, just remember to prepare the elements before the start of the, the service. And when we do start the service, just have them uh, around you and handy and ready for us to start the service. Uh, on that, we're going to come to the third announcement, which is on our service resumption. I know I gave us some preliminary uh, notice last weekend, and like I mentioned, we are working towards the resumption of our services for, from the month of July onwards, and as always, we are always uh, monitoring the situation to see whether adjustments or a different direction needs to be taken. But we can confirm that from next weekend onwards, okay, uh, 3rd and 4th July, we'll be resuming uh, the following on-site services at Touch Centre. Okay, it will be our English service on Saturday night and our Chinese service on Sunday morning. Now, as always, there's going to have to be some level of uh, uh, rostering. So, like I think I did mention briefly a while back that the, I know we were going through our roster the last round, but then we kind of had to stop. So, we'll be re picking up from there again. So, for the month of July, this is how it's going to look like. Uh, for the first two weekends, right, 3rd, 4th of July and then 10th, 11th of July, uh, for the Saturday English service, it'll be open up to uh, Pastor Wheelon and Christabel's team. For the Sunday Chinese service for that weekend, it will be the other Chinese cells. If you notice, uh, that you can see the asterisks at the bottom. The Chinese cells that are coming from Pastor uh, Asher, Wendy's side, Pastor um, uh, Ching Kuang Siu side, Pastor Eugene Dorothy's side, Pastor Mantai Alicia side, Pastor Roland Lai Fan side, Pastor Richard and Cheney side, and Pastor Simon and Marilyn side. Uh, so just take note of that. And then on the next two weekends of July, 17, 18 July, 24th, 25th July, will be for the English service will be Pastor Eugene and Dorothy side, and for the Chinese services will be Pastor uh, Daniel and Patsy Gunn's team. Now, the reason why we're giving this two weekends rotation right now is because for this period of time, we'll, we will not be resuming our services with up to, previously we had a capacity of 200 uh, with a maximum of 250, but we will not be resuming with that direction because for us to open up to that level, we will require uh, every participant either to be fully vaccinated, means at least two weeks after your second dose, or everyone will have to go through um, pre-event testing. So we are not going to take that, uh, that route at this point of time. So we're just going to keep it at 50 where no pre-event testing and no uh, vaccination is a requirement for us to have our services. So do take note of this roster. I know there's one more weekend at the end of July. There's actually a uh, five weekends. Uh, that one will be confirmed again because we do have some plans uh, as to what we want to do moving from there. But just take note of these first four weekends in July. For the teams that are assigned the on-site service, do take note that the tickets will open for booking every Wednesday uh, at 9 p.m. It's a similar arrangement to what we had previously. Your team pastor or for the other Chinese uh, cells, you'll receive, the cell leaders will receive the link from uh, the respective pastors to give you access to the ticketing site. And of course, once it's open to your particular uh, team, it's on a first-come, first-served basis. Okay. Now, of course, for the, for the different teams, we were assigned two weekends. We'll be working together with the team pastors to make sure that there's some level of allocation or splitting of the team in two so that we don't end up... Uh, I mean, the whole idea of having the team take two weekends is so that more people can attend than less. So the idea is not so that people can attend two weekends in a row. So I'll, we'll be managing this together with the team pastors. And for those coming for the on-site services and subsequently as well, do take note that safe entry check-in uh, via either your trace together mobile app or the work or working token is mandatory all right so you must come in using either the trace together app or the trace together token so if you need more information on this please visit fcbc.org.sg slash service resumption we've updated uh, the different information that you need to know of uh, up there all right and if you have questions about this uh, you can always check in if your team passes and uh, the relevant parties will see what we can do to get you that answer Okay, so I think we're excited. I can't wait to uh, have you guys back here next weekend. And I mean, it's a great time. We're going to be here uh, partaking of the Lord's Supper as a family. So I think that is fantastic. So I really cannot wait for, for that. And we still do have some idea of what we're going to do for the last weekend of July and the month of August. We have some exciting plans in mind as to how our on-site services will run. So we'll let you know more about that uh, over the next couple of weeks. All right, so I think those are the few announcements for this weekend. Uh, so with that, let's jump into the Word of God. Now, 
Uh, two weekends ago, I started this, uh, I guess I'm just going to call it an ongoing sermon series. Uh, and I called it, remember, I called it The Songs We Sing. And I think two weeks ago, I went through that hymn called uh, Take My Life and Let It Be, just teaching us a little bit about that so that whether we are new in church or we've been around for a long time, we can learn more about the song and we can receive the truths that come from it. And uh, I do want to continue with this. I, we took a break last weekend because it was Father's Day weekend. We had our special uh, service. And like I said, this sermon I, series, I guess I call it an ongoing sermon series because it's something that will come to uh, now and again uh, throughout the year. It's not going to be like, you know, we'll just do one shot, 10 weeks of this or anything. I'll come back to it as and when. Uh, I feel a lot leading us to it. But I kind of wanted to couple it that whenever I do a message from this series, the songs we sing, I kind of want to always do it in a pair. Meaning that when I do it a pair, I'll do take one week going through uh, an old song, and I'll do the, I'll spend another week talking through a newer song that we sing in 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 church. So I think I kind of want to pair it up like this, and I think it's an important series for us to go through because worship must not just be a program that we have here in church. That whether we're here at, at our physical venue itself or we're at home, when we're singing these songs, it's not just something we do because we are told to do so, but it's something, these are words that we are, we are giving to God that comes from the depths of our heart. You know, sometimes it's almost like, um, it's almost like when someone, you know, it's uh, 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 singing a song to another person, you know, whether out of appreciation or you're trying to call the other person and they're singing a song. You know, that song is not just empty words, but it comes from, from deep within that heart. Same thing, when we sing to the Lord, it must come from the depths of our heart. And so one thing I said, I think two weeks back, was that you need to sing what you mean and mean what you sing. This is something very important. And so with that, I want us to look through um, uh, a, a song today. Now, this song is not exactly a really new song. I mean, there's some songs that we just introduced in the last uh, year or maybe two years ago. This song is something that we've introduced probably about, I think, about 12 years ago. There about, It's not a really new song, but neither is it a, a, an old song. Uh, in fact, we just sang this song uh, earlier on during this service. And so the, the song I'm going to go through today is a song called You. Okay, we just sang as the first song we sang at this service. So I kind of want to go through it. I, I really do love this song. Um, I remember this, this song, I think I was one of the, the, the few worship leaders who suggested and said that we will introduce this song and sing it in, uh, in church. That was about 12 years back already. But I love the song. I always do love the content of this song. I love that it's, it's an upbeat song. It's kind, of a, uh, it's kind of a moving, a going kind of song, you know. And, and I really love it. I just want to just kind of go through this song with us and then I'm going to share with us a message uh, that comes from the theme of this song. So just, just a quick recap. I know we sang it just now. I'm going to just write, read through us, the, uh, read the lyrics and go through them with us uh, verse by verse, not in any particular sequence about how, like how we sing it, but just for us to understand it. So it starts off like this in the first verse. It says, Invading all my weakness, uh, God, you wrapped me up in grace. The worst of me succeeded by the best of you. Okay, and we go to verse 2. My, my heart is overtaken. My soul is overwhelmed. The worst of me succeeded by the best of you. I like this because it's, it's kind of us looking at ourselves. That, Lord, I know I'm weak. I know I have all these things that, that are not right. I have all these struggles. But yet, Lord, the worst of me, okay, is succeeded by the best of you. That, Lord, you are the one who transformed me. You are the one who makes me the best that I can be. I, I really like that. You move on to verse 3. It says, My dreams have found their purpose. My future in your hands. This life would have no meaning if it weren't for you. I like this because now it talks about how we've been transformed, but how after we've been transformed, it's not, we're not transformed just for the sake of being transformed, but we're changed from the inside so that now we can go out and do what God has called us to do. That's why my dreams, now we have a purpose. My future's in your hands. Lord, you're leading me to this place. Verse 4, it says, Lord, make my life transparent. Your life in mine display. Let every earthly glory go back to you. It talks about authenticity. It talks about displaying the presence of God in every single thing that we do. And in whatever we do, if there's any glory to be given, Lord, we don't want to hog it to ourselves, Lord, may it all go back to you. Then you go to the pre-chorus, as this part, you know, uh, it says, So I lay me down, for kingdom come, steal all that is within me, 
because all I want in this world is more of you. This really comes to the essence of, uh, of discipleship, of what it means to be a Christian, you know, about laying our lives down, not for our own sake, not for any earthly cause, but for the sake of the kingdom. And you know what? Surrendering our lives, laying our own lives down, it's a very scary notion because it talks about sacrifice, it talks about surrender, it talks about submission. And that's why you come to that next line there. Okay, that next line, uh, so I lay me down for kingdom come, steal all that is within me. I remember when we first uh, introduced this song, I actually got a lot of people uh, writing in to me and say, Pastor, I think there's a, there's a, there's a, mistake, you know, as a typo on the slides, is supposed to be still, S-T-I-L-L, -L, okay, still all that is within me. Uh, I see some other lyrics online, they put steal, S-T-E-A-L, okay, but the word there actually is steal, okay, what does it mean to steal, to steal oneself, okay, S-T-E-E-L, it means, the reason for that word steal is that you become like steal, is to prepare yourself, is to you know, uh, 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 to, to toughen up yourself, to prepare yourself mentally for a very difficult task ahead. So you will hear that, uh, you will watch some war movies, you know, and uh, uh, before a big battle, a war commander, you know, he'll go out and say, you know, steal yourselves. Basically, it means prepare yourselves for the battle that's going to come. So to steal all that is within me means that, that Lord, I, I want to become strong. I want to be courageous for what it is that you're calling me to do. Then we go into the chorus. We say, uh, in the less of me, it is you, increasing as I fade away, your light for all the world to see. God, it is you who breaks the chains, it is you who lights the way, and everything I am cries out for you. I mean, this is why the song is called You. I mean, not you or me, but talking to, about God. It's about Him, because we say that, Lord, it's not about me, it's about, it's about you. May I fade away, may you increase in my life, may your light shine for the world to see. May it, Lord, every single thing that I have, every victory that I have in my life, it is you who breaks the chains, the chains of, 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 of uh, fear, the chains of anxiety, the chains of sin, the chains of death, and so on. Lord, you are the one who lights the way, and I like the last line, everything I am cries out for you. So we... I, I remember I introduced this song because we need to cry out for more of God. We want to have more of God. And, and if I wrote down two things about the theme of this song, it's really about letting go, but it's also about moving forward. And, and that's, that's really a lovely thing about this song. It talks about letting go. You know, I lay my life down. Uh, it talks about may I decrease or may, I, may there be less of me and may there be more of you, O oh God. But at the same time, it's, it's about moving forward. It's about fulfilling God's purposes. It's about doing what God has called us to do. It's about shining God's light in this world. So it's about moving forward as well. And that's why I kind of like it. It's, it's upbeat. It's not just a, a, a low energy song because it's kind of like us saying, God, I want to lay my life down and I want to charge forward. I want to go forward to fulfill the things that you want me to do. So I, I've always loved this song. Now, I, of course, I know as... as uh, as time goes by, as generations go through, you know, the sounds and music always, always change. Some people prefer a particular style and, 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 and so on, but it, you can't compare genre of music to another genre of music. It's just, it's just different. It will never be an apple-to-apple -apple kind of thing. It's like, because I know sometimes in church, people will say, oh, I, uh, you know, oh, hymns are the only kind of song that we should, we should, uh, we should sing, but that's kind of a particular genre. It's like saying that, you know, oh, Jazz is the only, is the best kind of music in the world. You, you can't quite say that because every genre, every type of music is different. And even in church, as we go through different generations, there will be a different sound. It may, not every sound may be something that resonates with us, but that doesn't mean that the song itself doesn't have important truths or an important message for us to take hold of. And when I was looking through this song, I was reading up on, uh, uh, it's written by, by, uh, by Hill Song, I was looking through some of their uh, interviews about what they say about this song, and uh, it really comes from John chapter 3, which I mentioned earlier on. So I'm going to bring us to today's scripture reading. We're going to be looking at John chapter 3, verses 22 all the way to 36, but I'm going to break it up into two parts, okay, just to give us a better uh, understanding today, I will read from the New Living Translation because of the way it's translated, the phrasing there. Uh, it's more of a narrative. It's helpful to help us understand what was going on at that point in time. So John chapter 3, verses 22 to 26 first. This is what it says. Then Jesus and his disciples left Jerusalem and went into the Judean countryside. Jesus spent some time with them there, baptizing people. 
At this time, John the Baptist was baptizing at Anon near Salim because there was plenty of water there. And people kept coming to him for baptism. Verse 24, this was before John was thrown into prison and John eventually would be uh, put to death. Uh, Verse 25, a debate then broke out between John's disciples and a certain Jew over ceremonial cleansing. So John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, the one you identified as the Messiah, is also baptizing people. And everybody is going to him instead of coming to us. So right here, okay, you see that there's a dispute happening uh, over, over <laughs> I guess, over baptism. Basically, Jesus was baptizing people. John the Baptist, I mean, being John the Baptist, he was baptizing people as well. And a dispute came up about that. Uh, and then it was almost like a competition between both sides. Then you read on from verse 27 all the way to 36. John replied, No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you, I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride, and the bridegroom's friend is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. In verse 30, he must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Or other translations say, he must increase and I must decrease. Verse 31, he has come from above and is greater than anyone else. We are of the earth and we speak of earthly things, but he has come from heaven and is greater than anyone else. He testifies about what he has seen and heard, but how few believe what he tells them. Anyone who accepts his testimony can affirm that God is true, for he is sent by God. He speaks God's words, for God gives him the spirit without limit. The father loves his son and has put everything into his hands. And anyone who believes in God's son has eternal life. Anyone who does not obey the son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time, we thank you for your word, and we ask that you speak to us so that we can learn from your spirit, we can be touched, we can be transformed, and Lord, we pray that we will be a people who don't just offer empty words to you, but we will always sing what we mean and mean what we sing, that when we come and we worship you, Lord, it is truly with all our hearts and all our strength and all our might. So Lord, we commit this time to your hands, speak to us, anoint my lips as I bring your word to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, we were going through John chapter 3 here and the the later half of John chapter 3. Uh, John chapter 3, or rather the whole, I mean, the, the, the gospel of John was recorded by John the Apostle. But this particular part of John chapter 3 is not talking about John the Apostle. It is talking about John the Baptist. And in case there's any confusion or any of us may not know this, John the Apostle and John the Baptist are not the same people. John the Apostle or the disciple, he was one of Jesus' disciples. Okay? John the Baptist was, uh, was not. John the Baptist was actually slightly older than Jesus. He started his ministry ahead of Jesus, preaching the gospel, asking people to repent. He was baptizing people. And in fact, John the Baptist and Jesus were actually relatives. If you look to Luke chapter 1, it talks about John the Baptist's mother Elizabeth. Uh, who was a relative of Mary, who was Jesus' uh, earthly uh, mother, and uh, they were actually relatives. So, John the Baptist, he started his ministry earlier, he had his own disciples, he had his own following, and if you recall in uh, Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist would actually be the one who baptizes Jesus. Jesus went up to him and asked him to, to, to baptize him. And as we are reading in John chapter 3 here, there comes up this sort of a, a dispute between John's disciples uh, and this uh, Jew that was over there. And they were kind of coming from a point of view that, that Jesus was now John's rival. To which John responds that it is not about John himself. It's not about him, but it's about the Messiah who is Jesus. And so that's where John says this in John chapter 3, verse 30. He says, He must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase. He must increase in prominence. He must increase in anointing, increase in power. In every aspect, He must increase, but I must, 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 must decrease. And I thought that was a powerful line, and I think it's a line that many of us have heard many times. We have prayed it. We have said these words in our prayers as well. But that's a key essence that comes out in this song that we sing called 
you. You know, uh, in the chorus we sing, In the less of me it is you, increasing as I fade away, your light for all the world to see. That is that same heartbeat. That is really, that kind of summarizes what John the Baptist was saying. He's saying that Christ, the Messiah must increase, I must decrease. His light must shine brightly and if, if, if anything in my life shines, it is to show people His light, not my own light. And so, this song is important because this song is, uh, is us crying out to God. You know, like in the very last time, the chorus is all, uh, that all we have because Christ out for you. So, the question today is this. Why must we cry out for more of God in our lives? Why must we cry out for more of God in our lives? Why should we cry out for more of God in our lives? And there are two things, two simple things I want to share with us this weekend. Number one, why must we cry out for more of God in our lives? Well, firstly, because we need Him in our lives. We need Christ in our lives. We need God in our lives. Now, as we go through life, as we journey through our life, we, we want to grow. We want to be strong. We want to be courageous in everything that we face. We want to improve. We want to be victorious. We want to, to, to go through a life where we are always facing different situations, but we're overcoming them. We want that. But at the same time, we know that all of us are imperfect. Okay? Imper we, of course, sin is a big thing. We're imperfect. But don't just, just talk about, about that. In many other areas, we're, we're imperfect. Yes, we, we need to be courageous, but the truth is we can be very afraid at times. We can be filled with anxiety. We need to be strong, but anytime we got, we got our own pitfalls, our own struggles here and there. But, that's where we need God in our lives because He is the one who can transform us. You go to verse 1 of that, the, of the song You. It says, Invading all my weakness, you wrapped me up in grace. The worst of me succeeded by the best of you. I, I always liked it that the first line or the first word of this song is the word invading. Okay, the word invading, it's, that's, that's a strong word, you know. Okay, it's a strong word. And it really shows how, how the presence of God needs to invade our lives, needs to come and sweep through our lives. And you know, when you use the word invading, I think of like an army like that. You talk about in, an invasion. It's about an army that goes to a place, they invade that place, they make their way through and they set up camp over there. It's the same thing. We need God. We need God's anointing. We need His presence. We need His strength. We need everything from Him. We need Him to, to sweep through our life and set up camp inside our lives because of all our weaknesses. Because without that, we, all these weaknesses are, are the things that, that dominate our lives, but we cannot have that. We want God to come and transform us. We want God to come and change us. That's why it's amazing that line, that's the, the last line of the verse, which is used in verse 1 and verse 2, it says, the worst of me succeeded by the best of you. See, we are human. We have all our different struggles. We have all our weaknesses. And to overcome that, to become victorious is not to go at these things, go against these things with our own human strength, with our own human ability. Sure, yes, our human strength and own human ability will get us so far. But you know what? To be completely transformed, we need to ask God to come and, and, and fill our hearts, to fill our lives. That's why I say we need God. We need God. In John chapter 3, verse 27, John the Baptist said this to the disciples, to his disciples. He answered them and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. See, for us to live that victorious life, for us to live as to live in a way where God intended us to live, it is how to say it is a spiritual issue. And if it is a spiritual issue, the way we overcome it is spiritually. And that's why we need to receive from God. Yes, we can try and solve our own problems in our own ways here on earth, but that's taking an earthly approach to it. Not, not saying that we're not supposed to, but that just covers that aspect. For us to move in the spiritual, you talk about spiritual warfare and all that, then we need to receive what God has for us. We need to receive that in the Spirit. That's why you go on to John chapter 3, verse 30 to 31. Uh, he, 
John goes on to John the Baptist is going to say that he must increase and I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth, but he who comes from heaven is above all. See, when God comes into our life, God he 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 is in a totally different plane. He comes with a with with an authority that's not of this world. He comes with a supernatural authority. He comes with a supernatural power. He comes with a supernatural glory, that supernatural presence. And He comes and He fills our lives. And you know, we need more of that. We need that in our lives. And so, in this song, you know, it talks about us fading away. John the Baptist says, He must increase, but I must decrease. He says, Lord, I, want, I need to grow more in you. Lord, we all need more of you. You know, today, right now, if you and I, if we want to live the lives that God has called us to live, if we want to uh, live according to all His commandments, if we want to fulfill all the commission that He has given to us, if we want to, to do every single thing that He's called us to do, we're not going to be able to accomplish that by our own strength, by our own means. It is only going to be possible to be accomplished through the power and the presence of God. I mean, for, for, for us in the ministry as pastors or as leaders, you know, what if, if God calls you, speak healing upon a person. We don't have that power to bring that healing about. We don't have it. So we, yes, we pray for that person, but when we pray, it is God that is at work. We are crying out desperately. We need God to be at work. And I don't know what are your own weaknesses, what are your own struggles, but Today, some of us, maybe this, these must be the words that we say, you know, Lord, invade, invade my life. Invade all these weaknesses. Set up camp there because I need you. I need you so that I can overcome. And you know what? Saying that is not, acknowledging that weakness is not something that is weak. In fact, acknowledging that weakness is how we find our victory. Apostle Paul wrote this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I mean, that's almost a, an oxymoron there. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What do you mean? Well, what Paul is saying is that when in all my weaknesses, that's when we can see the grace of God, the glory of God, and the strength of God shining brighter than ever. Because the reality is, Paul is saying, I am weak. I cannot do all this. But literally, I mean, I, I kind of, kind of just a, a bit of a sidetrack here. But if you look at Paul's life, okay, you talk about that first verse, invading all my weakness. Uh, you wrapped me up in grace. The worst of me succeeded by the best of you. This first verse right there, I, I don't know, but I hear that and I feel like that summarizes Paul's life, right? Apostle Paul. Before that, okay, uh, uh, before Apostle Paul, I mean, encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, what was Paul doing? Paul was persecuting Christians and I mean, he was, he was persecuting Christians. He was bringing cases against them so that they would be uh, uh, executed I can really see Paul really going with soldiers, you know, bring, get people dragged out of their houses because they're Christians and getting them arrested, getting them executed. Paul was that kind of a person. He was, he, he was not a good person. But yet, he encounters Jesus on the road to Damascus. He is blinded there. And when he encounters Jesus, right, Jesus doesn't come against Paul like some uh, uh, avenging spirit. No, you know, Paul, you are, you are bad man. You have done all these things against my people and I'm here to make you suffer. No. Jesus calls out to him and says, why are you persecuting my people? And you know what? Jesus extends grace to him. Jesus gives Paul that other chance. And through that encounter, Paul is totally transformed. And I mean, I look at that and say that, Wow, I mean, he, under, he would understand this verse that was written right there, that he saw. And, and you know what? When Paul was on that road to Damascus, he was, he was quote-unquote, taken captive by the, by the presence of God. The presence of Jesus right there was so strong. And it was literally, you see how God invaded Paul's weakness right there. He invaded him, but yet there was grace in that place. Paul was transformed and literally the worst of Paul was succeeded by the best of Christ. 
And today, we, we, we learn so much from the Apostle Paul. We, we learn so much about grace and mercy from the Apostle Paul as well because that is what he lived out. Today, in our own lives, that is how it is. You know, we, we, we talk about uh, our own weaknesses in, in, in Galatians 5. Galatians 5, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, what does it say? It says, uh, from verse 22 to 23, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. That's what the presence of God does in our lives. That's what the, the, the Spirit of God that rules and reigns in our lives, that's what it does. That's what He does. And that's why we must cry out and say, God, it is you. Lord, may we decrease and you increase. And when you look at Galatians 5, there are two parts. There's one part which is the fruit of the Spirit, but the other aspect which is the lust of the flesh or the works of the flesh. And what does it say? You know, the works of, of the flesh are so many different things. The works of the flesh are, you know, adultery, fornication, unclean, uh, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, hatred, and so on and so forth. It's a long list of the things of the flesh. And those are our weaknesses. And, and Paul goes on to write about all that. But finally it says, but, the Holy Spirit that is in us produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. You know what? If we want to live out those things, if we want to say that, hey, I want my life to be defined by a godly kind of love, my life to be defined by a godly kind of, of faithfulness, of gentleness, a godly kind of self-control, you know what? You and I cannot do it through our own efforts. We need God in our lives. We need God. All these weaknesses, we need God in our lives to help us overcome them. You know what's the greatest weakness in our life? The greatest weakness that will ever be in our lives is this thing called sin. And John the Baptist in John chapter 3 reminds us in verses 34 to 36, it says that for Jesus, He is sent by God. He speaks God's words for God gives Him the Spirit without limit. The Father loves His Son and has put everything into His hands. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life but remains under God's angry judgment. This eternal life right here is not just about living forever. It's not about finding some, some fountain of youth and never growing old or finding something that gives us uh, immortality or what. No, eternal life is, is, is more than all that. Eternal life is not just a get out of jail free card so that we don't have to be condemned, so that we will not go to hell, so that we can go to heaven. No, no this is talking about an exchange that takes place, an exchange that comes because of God, that God looks at us. Then He, he looks at us in the worst of our, of our capacity, how we live in sin and how because of that sin, like the Word of God says that the wages of sin is death, we, des we deserve this death. We deserve an eternal separation from the presence, from the power and from the glory of God. But yet God is not happy with that. God does not want that to happen. And so out of His grace, He extends salvation to us. He says, you know what? I see you in all that weakness, but I want to help you. And so He gives us that redemption. He gives us that forgiveness. And this is the most important thing. Literally, we need God in our lives. We need God in our, we need God in our, without God, there'll be no salvation. There'll be no hope for us. And so as we, when we sing this song, you know, why do we cry out to God? And everything that I am cries out for you. Why must all that we are, everything that we have cry out to God? Because truly, we need Him. We need Him in every aspect of our lives. But some of us, as we hear this, maybe you say, but those words don't mean much to me or, or, or it's not quite clicking with you. Sometimes you know why? Because I must ask us this question, are we living our lives in such a way where we need God in it? See, what I mean by that, sometimes we go about living our own lives. We're not doing the things of God. We're doing what we want to do. And when we do what we want to do, very often we don't need God in our lives. You know, when God calls you to go and when you're, you're serving the poor, when you're praying for the sick, when you're praying for healing, you know what? That's when you're going to learn that you need God. I, I mean, 
all of the all of us, anyone who has ever served as a cell leader, you serve as a pastor, you know, you, you sometimes you're put in a situation that you well, you die, die, you need God to come through. When you're praying for healing for somebody at church service or in a hospital visiting uh, someone. I remember when I first became uh, a cell leader, I used to I used to take out my Bible and say, God, well, my cell group is going to start in two hours. I, 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 I need something. I need some kind of, of, of spiritual input to, give in, to, to speak into their lives. Lord, give me a word. And I will, I will spend that time on my knees, cry out to God, say, God, I need that word. Because we're living in a way where you need God in your life. But some of us, well, truly, we're not actually living our lives in a way that we need God. We don't actually need God. Some of us, right, if... If God answers all the prayers in our life right now, our lives may not change much because we're not even praying. We, it doesn't bother us. We are, we're just going through our own thing. We're living according to our own ways. But today we must say, Lord, I want to live in such a way where I need you. I want to come to that reality. I want to come to that revelation that I need you in my life. So that's the first thing I want to share with us. Okay? Why must we cry out for more of God in our lives? Number one, because we need Him in our lives. And with that, now I want to move to the second reason. And the second reason kind of explains also why some of us are at a place that we feel like I don't quite need God in my life. And so the second reason why we must cry out for more of God is because reason number two, we want to live for Him. We want to live for Him. Like I said, some of us, we don't need God in our lives because we are not living for Him. We don't actually want to live for Him. But when you want to live for Him, you want to fulfill His purposes, you want to see His promises unfold in your life, then that's when you're going to realize that you need God in order for all that to happen. Because it will never happen by our own efforts purely. It needs, yes, we must put in our own effort, we must do our part, but it needs God's hand upon it. In verse 3 of the, of the song, you says, My dreams have found their purpose. My future in your hands. This life would have no meaning if it weren't for you. It's talking about how, God, I want to live for you and you alone. Today, we, we must say this. Are we at this place where we actually want to live for Him? Every part of our lives, it is for the sake of of God is we're living it for Him, we're living it for His glory. Is that what we actually want? Because only when we live that way, then you're going to live a life where you actually will, will really need God. Because if you don't want to live a life for Him, then you will never see the need for God in your life. You know, we, we live in a world where it's commonly accepted that we need, to, we need to find ourselves, we need to look inside, we need to look to ourselves in order to discover our purpose and our meaning. But that's not actually what the Word of God teaches us. In John chapter 3, John the Baptist, he himself demonstrates to us that he is not living a life according to his own plans or his own purposes, but instead he is living for God. He wants to live for God. In John chapter 3 verse 28, he says this, speaking to his disciples, he says, you guys, you bear yourself, you, you yourselves bear me witness that I have said before, I am not the Christ. I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent before Him. He says this, I, I am not the person of, uh, that, that all attention should be on. No, I'm just preparing the way. I'm just going before. And then he goes into verse 29 and 30, where he talks about this whole bridegroom as a, a wedding, if you would, as a, a picture there. He says, it is the bridegroom who marries the bride and the bridegroom's friend is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. John the Baptist paints this picture right there of a wedding. And he says, you know what? In this wedding, I am not it's, it's not an all eyes on me kind of situation. I am not the center of attention. I am not the, the bridegroom. I am not the one who takes center stage. It is God. And you know what? I am here to support that. That's what John is, is saying. He say, you know what? I am the bridegroom's friend. I am not the bridegroom. I am not the main uh, event. I am not the person that all attention should be on. And he was demonstrating what it means to be a disciple of Christ, where he lives his life not for himself. 
He lives his life for the sake of God. He wants to live a life for God. That was what he was demonstrating. Two weeks ago, when we went through the, the hymn, you know, Take My Life and Let It Be, I mean, there are similar themes in both these songs as well. And two weeks ago, I shared with us from Luke chapter 9, where Jesus said this in verse 23 to 25, where Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self, or in other translation, their very souls? See, it talks about a life that is not lived for ourselves, where our lives, everything that we do, don't revolve around our wants or our desires, but it revolves around God. That is what it means that it says we want to live for Him. We want to live for Him. And, and, and it's a choice right here. You know, when you listen to the words of Jesus here. He's making a, it's a challenge, it's a choice for the people. Whoever wants to be my disciples, deny yourself. He gives all the conditions. Whoever wants to be my disciples, do all this. You choose. And Jesus often did that. He did that with the rich young ruler as well, remember? Okay, uh, uh, sell off all your possessions, give to the poor, and then come and follow me. He sets the conditions right there. And it's a choice that we have to make. And so, we come back to this song where we sing it. There's that portion there, you know, it says, So I lay me down for kingdom come. Steal all that is within me because all I want in this world is more of you. You know, laying ourselves down, it talks about sacrifice. It's denying ourselves, not for any other purpose, but for the kingdom of God, for what God wants to do. And that is a scary thing. That's why it says, steal all that is within me. I need to steal myself. I need to prepare myself. I need to receive that courage because it is scary to lay down your life. It is scary to lay down your own dreams, your own aspirations. All of us here, we, there are many things that we want to do. There are many things that we want to believe that we can see happen in our lives. But are we willing to lay that down for the sake of what God wants us to do? For some of us, God... Is calling us to lay down our lives. In what sense? Some of us maybe have to lay down a particular dream, to deny ourselves a particular dream, to lay down uh, a particular um, uh, career, something that we're believing in, something that is a blessing to us. Are we willing to lay all that down for Christ and just do what He wants us to do? And we're so, we're so captivated by that, that every part of our lives revolves around this. You know, I was reading through John chapter 3 and there was something interesting there that just caught my attention. Uh, we read about John the Baptist there and we read how he says he was sent to prepare the way for Jesus and he started his ministry earlier. He was con and, but basically, you look at his life, he was constantly doing what God has called him to do. Okay? But notice this, you know, the moment he meets Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, he didn't stop his ministry. Remember, he said, you know, I'm, I'm preparing it the way. He says that, you know, today I, I baptize you with water, but there'll be someone who, who even greater, who will baptize you in, in the Spirit. And finally, he meets that person. He meets Jesus, the Messiah. In Matthew 3, baptizes him. But after that, John didn't stop his ministry, you know. He didn't stop serving God. He didn't put an end to, he didn't put an end date when it comes to serving God. Remember, this point I'm saying, you know, that we we, we cry out for more of God because we want to live for Him. We want to live for Him, right? There's no end date to that. You know? It is not a contract. It's not whatever. It's not God. I, I, I live for you from this, this period to this period and then the rest of the time is my own time. No, God, I just give you this particular few years of my life. No, our whole lives is lived for Him. And if you look at, at John the Baptist, he lived his entire life for God. He said, you know, I'm preparing the way for the Messiah. The Messiah shows up. What does John do? He continues to do what he had always been doing. Preaching the gospel, calling people to repent, baptizing people. He continued to keep on serving God. He didn't put an end date to it. He kept going. And finally, he would give his life for the gospel because he would rebuke uh, King Herod and uh, he would be beheaded for, for that. But I look at that and I find it so interesting that 
that is a demonstration of wanting to live your life for God. That is not just a part of my I'm not living part of my life for God. I'm not living part of my life for the ministry that God wants me to do. I'm not living part of my life for the people that God has called me to love. No, I live all my life for God. John the Baptist was serious when it comes to wanting to live for God. He wasn't living for himself. You know, he said, I was here to prepare the way for the Messiah, right? Messiah is here right now. I've done my part. I've served my national service. I'm done with the two years or whatever it is. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm free. Now I can, I can finally pursue all the things I could never do. I could never pursue. No, John the Baptist didn't do that. He gave his entire life. Very similar to the hymn, you know, take my life and let it be. He gave it all. He didn't stop. He didn't give up. Because at the end of the day, I believe he, he, that, that word holds true. I mean, that was a demonstration in John the Baptist's life. Luke 9.25, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? You know, church, like I've been saying, we are here, we, we, must, un, we must understand this a little bit better so that we, we sing what we mean. We mean what we sing. Then when we sing the words to this song, they say, God, it is you. In, in the less of me, it is you. I want you to increase as I fade away. Do we actually mean these words? Or are these things that we say just because well, it's part of the program? Okay, like it's quite a catchy song. Other people are singing it. I also sing along with it. No, do we sing this because we actually mean it? Because that is what it means, you know. That when we say those words, so I lay me down for kingdom come, it means that, God, I want to live my life for you, not for myself. In fact, sometimes we will say, th- we will say that, no? We will say, God, I want to live for you. But what does that actually mean? God, I want to live for you. I flip it around. And basically, it means that, God, I don't want to live for myself. I don't want to live for my own desires. I don't want to live for my own needs here on earth. I don't want all that. Lord, what I want to live for is you. Do we dare to say that? It is a scary thing. That's why, I, that's why again, I say, like I said, I love this song because so I lay me down for kingdom come, steal all that is within me. It's, it's, it's not easy. We need courage. We need a divine courage that comes from God. And you see that in all the disciples. Remember the disciples when, when, when Jesus was arrested, what happened? Everybody fled. Everybody abandoned him. Even Peter, the, the, I mean, he, full of bravado, says, no one else, even if everybody else abandoned you, I will never abandon you. And now he denied Jesus three times. Everybody fled. But yet you look at the disciples. In, I mean, you compare them in the Gospels versus in the book of Acts. It's like something transformed and something changed. I mean, these guys will, will be guys who, who would give their lives for, for, for the gospel. These are people who will say that, you know what, I don't deserve to be crucified in the same way of Jesus, like Jesus crucified me upside down. What changed? These guys who were a bunch of cowards, how did they become like that? Well, it's because they understood what it meant to lay down their lives. Literally. They say, Lord, I want to live for you. And when we say that we want to live for Him, you're going to live in a way where you need Him in everything that you do. And when you depend on Him and His Spirit and His anointing, you're going to experience something totally new. You're going to do things that you cannot even imagine. You're going to see things happen in your life that you never even thought would be possible. You know why? Because everything is possible through Him. Not everything is possible through you, through me, through our own hands, our own efforts. But through Him, all things are possible. So today, these are the two things I want to share with us. Why? Why must we cry out for more of God in our lives? Reason number one, we need Him in our lives. We need Him in every part of our life. And it doesn't matter what we do, Wherever God has called us to be, in our capacity, whether we're a pastor, a leader, a cell member, a student, a teacher, someone working out there in whatever area, whatever it is, we need Him in our lives. But a a deeper reason why we must cry out for Him is number two, we want 
to live for Him. We want to live our entire lives for Him. And these two points, like I've been saying, they, they build on each other. Some of us, the truth is that we, we don't need Him in our lives at this point in time because we don't want to live for Him. But I pray that today, God brings us to a place of conviction where He challenges us that, that we have this desire to want to live for Him. And when you live for Him, you find out that you need Him in every part of it, in every single thing that you do. So church, we must learn to cry out for God. We must keep looking to Him and say, God, it is You. Today, yes, I'm struggling with sin, I'm struggling with doubt, I'm struggling with the anxiety, I'm struggling with the anger, I'm struggling with the emotion that I cannot shake. But you know what? God, it is You who breaks the chains. We must come to Him. We must live in that way where we want to live for Him, where we need Him in everything that we do. This whole song, like I said, the, the, the writers of the song, and, and I said that it, it is summarized by John chapter 3, verse 30, which says that He must increase and I must decrease. We cry out to God because we're saying, God, I want to decrease and I want You to increase in my life. Today, if there's any one of us that were in this place of weakness and sometimes we are, we, we are struggling so much that we're overwhelmed by the weakness and all we can see is our own weakness around us. Well, God wants to encourage you with this. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 to 31. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired. Young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they shall not faint. Today, if, if, you, if you know that you have all these weaknesses, just remember, God's, God's power, God's strength is made perfect in that weakness. And today, some of us, we... We're not at that place where we want to live for the Lord. You know what? And it's because we've got all these other things. We, we kind of are at this, at this place where we need to do all these different things. It's like, Lord, I, it's, we kind of say, God, it's not that I don't want to follow you, not that I don't want to live for you, but there's so many other things in life. I could attend to all these other things. In fact, there was a, there was a, there was a moment where there were people who wanted to follow Jesus and said, you know what, Jesus, I can't follow you right yet. I've got to attend to these other things. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, you drop all that follow me right now. So I was going to say, God, there's so many other things to worry about. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Jesus says, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And what happens in those preceding verses, if you go and look before that in Matthew chapter 6, it talks about worry. Worry about whether we have enough, whether we have this, whether we have that, whether we, have, we can survive and go through life. And Jesus says, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He sets that, that, that divine hierarchy, that focus of our lives. He's not saying that all these things don't matter. You know? I mean, interestingly, you go to Matthew 6, you talk about, you know, worrying about what food shall we eat, what clothes shall we wear, all these worries. Jesus doesn't dismiss these things, you know. Jesus didn't say, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and you will, all these things will be irrelevant. No. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. It means He will provide what you need. He never said these things are unimportant. But He says there's a divine order. Seek first His kingdom. Today, some of us, we're not living for our lives for God we're living our lives for ourselves. Some of us, we may actually be spiritually jammed. Why? Because we're spiritually jammed thinking, let me take care of these aspects of my life first. Then, I can give the rest of my life to the Lord. That's how we're thinking. And having, having served as a, as, a, as a youth pastor in our church for many years or so, I've, I see some parents at their place as well. That you know what? Yes, 
God, we, we don't say it like that, but in our action, we're saying, God, my children, these are the parts you can touch, these other parts cannot touch. Let them finish all this first, then, then we talk about living their lives for you. That's, that's the reality of it. But today, God says, we need to follow this divine order. Again, seek first His kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. He didn't say that these things were not important, but He says, He must be first and foremost in every single aspect of our lives. Today, we may be at that place ourselves saying, God, I want to I want to live for you, but I need to tend to all these things. Today, God is saying, lay your life down. Yes, it is very scary, but He will give you the strength, He will give you the courage to get through it. Today, God is calling out to us and all of us must respond. But I know at this service, there are bound to be some of us who have never responded to the gospel before. And you sit here hearing this message and thinking, you know what, sounds good, but I don't quite know how that applies to me. I want to tell you this, whether we know Christ or not, all of us need Him in our lives. Why? Because like it says just now, John the Baptist in John chapter 3, he talks about how eternal life is something that we can only gain through God. Now, why is eternal life something important? Eternal life is not about living forever, but this eternal life is about an eternal union between us and God. Let me tell you why this is so important. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fall short of the standard of God. Now, what is sin? Sin is doing wrong things, and of course, and it's also us living according to our own ways. It's us turning away from God and living according to our own desires, our own wants and everything. That is sin. And it says, all have sinned and fall short of God's standard. Now, what is God's standard? God's standard is perfection. No blemish, nothing wrong. That's how perfect, that's how holy He is. But all of us, we know, we will never claim to be that standard. Some of us, we will claim to be good people. We might say we're okay, might even say we're great people, but none of us dare to say that we're perfect. Well, we've fallen short of God's standard already. Let me tell you that. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. It means that because of sin, what we earn, what we deserve is death. Like I said earlier on, this death is an eternal separation of our spirits from the Spirit of God. And that's what, that's what, sin, that's what sin does to us. We're separated from God and we're destined for that eternal damnation. But God is not satisfied with that. God does not want us to, to be down that path. And so God is that God of redemption. God is a God who transforms. Like I said just now, we talk about Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was such a, a messed up man before that. He was persecuting Christians, putting people to death. But yet, Jesus Christ transformed him. That is the grace of God. And in the end, Instead of putting people to death, He Himself gave His life for the gospel. That is the grace of God. He wants to redeem us. And what does He do? God sends His Son, Jesus Christ, to die as a sacrifice, to take the punishment that we deserve for our sins. So the Bible tells us in that same chapter, John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but so that through Him the world may be saved. See, when Jesus died on the cross, one of the last, His last words was this, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know why? Because He took on the punishment of our sins. Jesus Christ experienced that separation from God so that we don't have to be separated from God, but we can be restored. We can be reconciled. And today, that is the grace. That is the gift of salvation that God has for us. And today, if you've never responded to the gospel before, it is no coincidence you're here. You're here because God is calling out for you. God is calling out to you. And today, you need to respond. You may, not, you may feel like you don't understand every single thing, but today, you know that God is, this, God is reaching out to you. You know, you can, you can say He's causing a stirring in your own spirit. Today, don't wait any longer. Come and respond. I'm going to close this service giving you an opportunity to respond. Here's what we're going to do. In a moment's time, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. I'll say this prayer out loud. I'll say it out line by line, especially designed for those of you who have never responded to the gospel before. You follow after me in that prayer. 
pray it out loud, say everything I say, line by line, follow after me, word for word. And I want all the Christians, wherever we are, to pray together in this moment as well. And also as our own personal rededication to the Lord. So I, I want to give us this moment to respond. But today, don't wait any longer. God is calling out to you. This is the day of your salvation. This is the moment that God is saying, my son, my daughter, it's time to come home. I love you. I want to invite us right now. Can we close our eyes and bow our heads? Wherever you are, close our eyes and bow our heads. So that we're not distracted by anything, but right now we can focus on God. I want you to pray after me. Just say these words. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for your great love for me. Thank you for your great love for me. That you would not give up on me. That you would not give up on me. No matter how much I've messed up. No matter how much I've messed up. Thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for sending your son Jesus. To die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I open up my heart to you. I open up my heart to you. I receive your love. I receive your love. I receive your grace. I receive your grace. I know I've sinned against you. I know I've sinned against you. You. But I thank you for forgiving me. But I thank you for forgiving me. Cleanse me of my sin. Cleanse me of my sins. Restore me. Restore me. Make me righteous. Make me righteous. Today. Today. I declare. I declare that you are my Lord. That you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. And I want to follow you. And I want to follow you all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With our heads bowed and our eyes still closed, I believe there are those of us who prayed this for the first time. And if that's you, here's what we're going to do. In a moment's time, I'm going to count to three. And the moment I say three, if you prayed along with me just now, once you hear me say three, I want you to say another simple prayer. But this time, I'm not going to lead you in a prayer, but I'll give you a few words to say. It's a very short prayer. I want you to say this prayer by yourself because... I don't want you to feel like, oh, you know, God hears the prayer because a pastor was praying with you. No, I want you to experience that God hears you. He knows you. He hears your voice because you are so precious to Him. I want you to say these simple words. Just five words. Say, God, reveal yourself to me. God, reveal yourself to me. And as you pray that, He hears you and, and in this moment or later today or tomorrow, whenever God is going to reveal Himself to you in such a real way, because He is calling out to you. And once we've done that, I'm going to pray over you. But I know there are those of you who didn't respond with the earlier prayer, but right now you know you need to respond. It's fine. You can just say this simple prayer at the count of three as well. Just say, God, reveal yourself to me. God, reveal yourself to me. So I'm going to count to three. And at the count of three, you say that, and I'll close with a prayer for you. One, two, and three. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for every single person who responded with this prayer. I know that their lives will never be the same again because you are with them. And to all of you who responded, the Word of God says that you can be strong, you can be courageous. You don't have to be terrified because the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. So I pray that as you say that today you want to live a life for Him, you're going to experience Him in every aspect of your lives. And I bless you that may you decrease and may He increase in your life. So we bless you. We thank the Lord for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, you can look up at the screen right now and we're just so happy for all those of you who responded because truly your life will never be the same again. And today as you respond, we just have to say this in our church that you're right now like a spiritual baby. You know, why do we say that? Because a baby needs a family and a community to journey through life. And same thing as a spiritual baby right now, you need a spiritual family and community to journey together with you. And we would love the opportunity to be this family to you. So if you responded in, in any way just now, okay, we want you to do, a, do something for us. We're going to put up this QR code on the screen right now and there's a URL there. We want you to go over to their website and get connected with us because we're serious about being this family to you. All right? And maybe even just now, you didn't 
do anything. You didn't respond to any of the prayers. You didn't do anything. But right now, you know you need to respond. You may do so at this link as well. And so go ahead, do that. Get connected with us. And I know as, as you begin this journey, we're excited to journey together with you. And truly, your life will never be the same again. So we thank God for you. Hallelujah. Well, church, we're going to close off this time worshipping the Lord. Of course, we must sing that song later on, but we'll get to that uh, later on. Because I like that song. It's upbeat. It's, it's a great song to send us off and, you know, we kind of sing it as, a, as an anthem as we go out and say, yes, God, we want to live for you. Lord, we, want, we know we need you in anything, everything that we do. We want to see your glory fill this earth. We'll do that later on. But right now, you know, this song is really about talking about how God we want to see you increase but us decrease none of us dispute or none of us will have an issue with God increasing in our lives but where the rubber meets the road the tough part is us decreasing maybe sometimes we just we don't think so much in the detail what that means we just think it as a metaphorical thing and you know okay I'll say those words may I decrease but may I decrease can look in many different ways you know it looks in us surrendering something a treasure that we don't want to let go of dealing with some trauma some past that we refuse to do letting go of something that is so precious to us giving up on, on a dream giving up on an aspiration I, I don't know what it is the list can go long, on and on but that's what it means in that sense and are we prepared for that and today I pray that we may rise up and interestingly, how do we rise up? Rising up for God begins by laying down our lives. By saying, Lord, this, I, I surrender everything. Take every part of my life. Whatever it is, Lord, I'm willing to give it to you. And, and I know today there's some of us who struggle with that. Some of us, we may even be in the ministry, we may be serving Him, but we, we have this nagging struggle with this. Today, I pray that God will increase your faith. I pray that God will give you that strength and courage. If you feel weak, you feel like, God, I cannot remember, God gives power to the weak. Today, I pray that you come to that place of laying down your life. And I've said this many times. You may not be able to say that, but today you say, I want to say that, but God, I'm struggling with it. You know what? That's great. It's fine to struggle. I'd rather that you struggle rather than you give up. Today, if you're struggling with that, say, God, help me. Give me that strength. If you need someone to pray for you, put it up on the live chat or get connected with someone from your cell group. They'll be happy to call you and just pray for you. But today, you need to respond. And later on, we'll end off singing this song. But right now, I just feel that first and foremost, we must draw near to the Lord. We must say, Lord, I want to live a life where I need you because I want you I want to live my life for you. If you need to respond in any way, you know, we can all, the rest of us, let's just stand and worship the Lord this song. If you need to kneel, you need to just sit and receive prayer wherever it is, fine. But let's come and join into the Lord with this song. And draw me close to you. Let me go and lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend and you are my desire and no one else will. Nothing else could take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace So help me find a way And bring me back to you You say, and you're all I want
That there are those of us that the Lord is challenging to lay down some aspect of your life. You, you do want to live for the Lord, but it's a struggle. So I just want to release this word over you and for all of us as well. Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 34. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the unbelievers seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I want you to remember this word especially where the Lord reminds us to seek first the kingdom of God. Before we close off with that final song, why don't we just lift up our hands to the Lord and lift them high in the posture of surrender. Because this posture of surrender, in reality, it is a posture of victory. That's where our true victory is found, when we surrender to the Lord. So Lord, today, we want to live lives that glorify you. Lord, I pray for every single person that will continue to cry out to you because we need you in our lives, because we want to live for you in every single thing that we do. So we commit ourselves to you, Lord. Lord, I know it's not easy. Lord, it's a struggle at times, but Lord, empower us. We pray that we will draw close to you. That Lord, when we feel afraid, when we feel uh, like, like there's no other way, Lord, you will be there with us to lift us up on wings like eagles. So we commit ourselves into your hands, Lord. And church, I speak this upon you truly, not beyond just, beyond just uh, uh, being a standard word that we always say, but truly, truly in the depths of your soul, I pray that you will be strong and courageous. Not out of your own ability, but because God is with you. He strengthens you. He builds up your courage. And then truly as a church, we will rise up to be the faith community that God has called us to be. And we will go out and we will see things that we've never seen before because God is calling us to places that we've never been before because God is calling us to do things that we've never done before and we'll see the miraculous take place. So Lord, we surrender our lives to you. 
Even if you're struggling right now, Lord, help us in our time of weakness. Help us in our struggle because we desire to glorify you. So Lord, we thank you. We pray all this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, church, as we close off this time, I think there's no better way to close it than to worship the Lord with this song. But truly, whatever it is, this is our prayer. That Lord, we want more of you. May we decrease, may every part of our lives decrease, but may we experience more and more of you. And church, may we all always experience the reality of Christ in our lives. So let's come, Pastor Roger, let's worship the Lord this song. In vain in all my weakness, you wrap me up in grace. And the worst of me succeeded by the best of you. Hey! Sing whoa, oh, oh, oh. Sing whoa, oh, oh, oh. Sing whoa, oh, oh, oh. My heart is overtaken. And my soul is overwhelmed. And the worst of me succeeded by the best of you. My dreams have found their purpose, my future in your hands. This life would have no meaning if it weren't for you. So I lay me down for kingdom come. Steal all that is within me Cause all I want in this world is more of you In the less of me it is you Increasing as I fade away Your light for all the world to see God it is you Who breaks the chains It is you Who lights the way in everything I have cries out for you Lord make my life transparent your life in my display and let every earthly glory go back to you so I lay me down so I lay me down for kingdom come still all that is within me Cause all I want in this world is more of you In the less of me it is you Increasing as I fade away Your light for all the world to see God it is you Who breaks the chains it is you Who lights the way in everything I am Christ out for you so I lay me down And I lay me down So I lay Kingdom come, still all that is within me. Cause all I want in this world is more of you. In the less of me, it is you. Increasing as I fade away, your light for all the world to see. God, it is you who breaks the chains, it is you. Who lights the way in everything I am Cries out for you Cry, whoa, whoa, whoa Cries out for you, oh, Jesus, praise you we thank you for all that you've done and lord we truly want to live our lives for you so i bless every single person here 
truly may the Lord increase in your life and may we learn to decrease in every single aspect Lord we surrender lives to you use us in every way possible in the mighty name of Jesus we pray Amen Amen God bless you thank you for joining us if you responded anyway just now do remember to get connected with us God bless you. May you have a great week ahead. Stay safe and we'll catch you at next weekend's services. God bless you.